طيب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام عليكم. Are you still sleepy? Ah, sort of. طيب you want to do some exercises? That's how you wake you up? Huh? Uh-uh. Boys can do push-ups, girls can do this, up and down. And then we finish, inshallah. طيب. Let me... Uh-oh, this thing is going to be troubles. We live in a country of technology and our Yeah, but it doesn't look it's still yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. Move it the other side. Uh, it should be this way. Yep. I hope it doesn't drop again. Time. So I have to stay away from it, right? Time, inshallah. Now, normally when I talk to younger people, I try to explain everything I say, and that takes a lot of time. So I'm going to be brief. Um, those of you, alhamdulillah, who attend lectures, khutbas, masajid, and so on, normally we start either by praising Allah or by saying with the name of Allah, right? Yani either you can say alhamdulillah or bismillah, either way. Now, you can say alhamdulillah, and then there are short versions. So I'm going to start with by saying alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Everybody knows it, right? I don't have to explain it, because everybody reads Surah Al-Fatiha, and we say alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. And this is what Allah actually taught us in the Quran to say. This is why we read it. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Now, again, we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, because the Prophet says that if the last word I utter, and if I drop dead now, and that's possible, right? Sometimes you get an Imam, actually, you see it on YouTube, the Imam was talking, and then all of a sudden he fell dead. That could happen. Now, the Prophet said, if the last word you utter before you die, you are guaranteed paradise. What is this word? Is la ilaha illallah. So I make it a habit. Every time to say la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Actually, the Prophet said the best prayer all the prophets and messengers made was la ilaha illallah. This is why when people go for hajj, he said, afdala ma da'a bihi nabiyyun. The best the prophets ever prayed to Allah is, is la ilaha illallah. Allah loves it. Type. So we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim or Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Sometimes we use the word Waliyu al-Salihin. Like Wali means the person who protects. Salihin are people of piety or righteous people. And then we send our peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa liyu salihin. Ashhadu anna muhammadan abdullahi wa rasuluhu al-ameen. Sometimes we say wa rahmatuhu lil-alameen. Which means we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger and the prophet of Allah. And he is the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent. Because Allah said in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ O Muhammad, we have sent you to be a mercy. And actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says everything that the Prophet told us is mercy for us. Why? Because it gives us a good life, saves it from hellfire, and takes it to paradise. Simple. You live a good life in your life if you follow the Prophet, you are guaranteed paradise, and then you are saved from hellfire. Now, the topic of this session, this is the opening, is role models. Now, a role model is somebody that you love, you like to. Could be an athlete in days when you to bring it closer to you, it could be a singer, an athlete, an actor, somebody who impresses you somewhere or another, and then you want to follow them. This is why you see people trying to imitate their way they talk, the way they dress, the way they walk, and all kinds of things that we have. Now, in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us all the prophets. Every prophet, every messenger is a role model in his way. And if you take the story of any prophet, you take to any prophet from Adam to Nuh to Ibrahim to Musa to Isa to Sulaiman to Dawood to Shu'aib, name them. Any one of them, if you look at their life, he's a role model in his capacity and his ways. And this is a long details. But the key person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually, there are two. Allah mentioned the word role models in them. That's Ibrahim alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Ibrahim, he says, Ibrahim, like he used the word Uswa. Uswa in Arabic literally means a role model. Something to follow, 
to guide yourself with, to imitate, to live their life with them, because these are the people that Allah chose them and put them in a certain position. About Ibrahim, alayhi salam, in one verse Allah says, Inna Ibrahim kana umma. Ibrahim was an umma. The word umma in Arabic could mean a whole community, a whole nation. And it could be in his head, like Ibrahim since his child, Allah, and Allah details his life for us. You know, one of the prophets, Allah mentioned everything about him in the Quran. When he was a child, when he was a youth, when he became a father, when he married, when he moved, when he became a prophet, the encounters he had with that. Like if you put Ibrahim alayhi salam um, in one package, you can see every aspect of his life and every moment of his life was a role that you can follow. This is why he says he was an ummah by himself in every aspect of it. The second person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, those of you who want references, if you go to Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah Al-Ahzab is chapter 33. Easy to remember, 33. That's the chapter number. And the verse is 21. This is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right out says, he said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed, in the character of the Prophet, you had the best of role model, the best of example, the best of character, but not to everyone. To whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا a person who knows he's going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we all know, everybody knows we are going to die. Everybody. When, how, where, at what age, nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But everybody knows. The most guaranteed thing for any human being is that we are going to die. For that, actually, for every living being. Because Allah says, every living being is going to test this. Now, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't tell us when, where. And you know, people are like um, two weeks ago, when if, uh, if you come to Isna, one of the boys who used to organize the camps and uh, night, like they call it Qiyam and so on, he got married, his wife had a miscarriage. 21 years, I mean 21 weeks, the boy didn't born, they say, come, said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you somebody better than that. So some people are born in the womb, they die in the womb, and they don't even see the world. So Allah decrees that they live for a certain period inside the womb of their mothers, and they die there, they died there. So they didn't even see the world. Now, some children are born the day they are born. They die the same day they were born. Actually, I had a daughter, she's buried here in Toronto. She died exactly less than an hour after she was born. All what I heard is a scream. They told me, oh, I have a beautiful day, the nurses came, and then all of a sudden, they're panicking, running around, and then they came and told you, are sorry, she passed away. Same, but maybe an hour or so. Now, sometimes people live for a month, two months, three months, four months, five months. I had a child also who died at four months. So I'm talking about myself now, things that happened. Four months, the child died. So I have a child died the same day he was born, four months. Another child of mine died six months. It was six months, so I have three. They're all here in Toronto, buried somewhere in Sinlac and Jane and Finch area. That was our old cemetery. Why I'm saying this to you? Because one thing we don't know, and I'm living now, by then I'm 67 years of age. Some people say, what, you're too young. I'm not young. Now, my father died at 93. My aunt died at 102, type. See the same family. Somebody dies the same day, four months. And by the way, my brother also, I have a younger brother who died when he was 14 years of age. Now, just look at it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, in the character of the Prophet, you have the best of role model. For whom? One, liman kana yarju Allah. That we know we are going to meet with Allah. Allah said this, for sure we are going to be brought back to Allah. وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Which is the day of judgment because we'll be held accountable. And then, وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And a person who's all the time conscious of Allah. And this is why when a young man came to the Prophet ﷺ, he said to me, Ya Rasulullah, give me a good advice. Good advice. The Prophet looked up and down at him. He said to him, one, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُ Wherever you are, and this is for you, remember that Allah is with you. Actually, I say to people, if you can all the time remember that Allah is with you, you'll be the best Muslim. That's it. All the time, anywhere you are, you look around, Allah sees me. 
He said, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُ اِتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُوَ And you are a human being. We are all open to mistakes. He said, every time you make a mistake, remember not to just fall on it. Say, I made a mistake. You make something good, it wives it. He said, the Prophet's mother. And then he said to him, وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ And when you are dealing with people, trust me, if you are good with people, you don't lose at all, no matter who they are. Even the worst people who hurt you, who harm you, who you, you feel, just be good to them. You don't lose anything. Now, so in the Prophet والسلام, Allah gave us the best of role model. And there is a lot of details, all the seerah on these books that you read. And every count of the Prophet's life was mentioned to us, partly in the Quran. Although the Quran doesn't directly detail just like Ibrahim السلام, but most of it is what we need in the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu Volumes, books, millions of pages were written about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, people say, but this is the prophet. He's being guided by Allah. The angels used to come to him. Jibreel used to accompany him. Uh, him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. What about the human beings? Now, I'm going to take you to another level of people. And there is a lot to see. I said, there is one book, actually one of the... Uh, Egyptian authors. This is the best book you can read, unfortunately. Um, I think it's translated in English, but it's in the Arabic. It's called Rijal Hawl al Rasul. Rijal means men around the Prophet. And then another sister wrote a book called Women Around the Prophet. So they have the balance. There are men who lived around the Prophet because he molded them. And there are women who lived around the Prophet. والسلام, and this is what we want to direct your attention. Each one of them, because unfortunately people don't know much about them. Yeah, and if you read about all these companions, and they were young, by the way, most of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were young boys and young girls. In the beginning of their life, they were like that. Like you hear, for instance, a name like Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas, the Muslims call him Hibr al-Ummah. Hibr in Arabic literally means the scholar of the Ummah of Muhammad is Ibn Abbas. Because so much knowledge. Ibn Abbas was a young boy. He used to ride behind the Prophet on the donkey. Imagine yourself, the Prophet is riding a donkey and there is this little boy riding behind him, holding him and he asking him questions and so on. And then later on, this man became the greatest ever scholar from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he had the company of Muhammad. And actually one time the Prophet, he said, the Prophet told me, Ya Ghulam, or oh kid. Ghulam in Arabic is kid. He was a little kid. And there are a number of people, if you go into the sea, you find, like one of the examples I always say, and these were young. Uh, one of them, like, uh, name is Sahla Sa'idi, Jundub, names that Muslims don't even pay attention to. And this boy who mentioned this, he said, um, Kunna Shababa, we were young boys. Shababa means peers. Mutaqaribun, like our age were almost like when you have 15, 16, 14, 17, uh, that's age bracket. He said, we were full of youth, shababa. And then he said we were hazawir. Hazawir in Arabic literally means we were very naughty kids. You know, kids sometimes are smart, especially if they are a group of people. Imagine yourself with 20 kids who are very young, very energetic. They are really full of energy, very smart, very naughty kids. He said, سَمِعْنَا بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى الله عليه وسلم. We just heard that there is a man, because in those days people will hear there is a man who claims to be a prophet, people go to him, and they want to be Muslims, and they will not. So they said, we said to ourselves, let's go and see this man, who is he? What does he do? What is he saying? What kind of a person he is? And he said, وَكُنَّا نَحْوًا مِنْ عِشْرِينَ We are about 20. Just imagine this scenario. 20 kids, very young, peers, very naughty, very full of energy. They heard about a the man, they wanted to go to him. They would drive him nuts, right? That was the case. They said, we went to him. And we were just sitting there, listening to what he says to people, see what he does. We watch everything in him. He said, مَكَثْنَا عِنْدَهُ عِشْرُونَ يَوْمًا He said, for 20 days, we practically forgot everything, even our parents. Because the Prophet ﷺ was so loving, so kind, so impressive, so captivating. These people said, we really didn't. Mean. And then he said, the only time we remembered our parents is when the Prophet one day said to us, boys, what about your parents? 
Didn't you long for them? He said, oh yeah, we didn't. He said, you go back to your parents, tell them what I told you, and then they carried the message on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Among these, there are lots of people. I mean, if you read, uh, and you hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give you the capacity to study these people, just take it, make it, go and search the names and so on. Now it's easy to Google any name and then you go on all the history of these people, what they were and so on and so on. Now, we take you now to two people and I'm going to take you to two people and tell you how the impact was them. Uh, one of them was a man who was less. You know, during the time of the Prophet والسلام, People were in Mecca, then he moved to Medina. But at that time, they were two big empires. One of them is the Roman Empire. That's why in the Quran, Allah has a whole chapter, a chapter in the Quran that we worship Allah with, is called the Romans, a room. Romans, the Romans. Uh, and this is chapter 30, 3 0 in the Quran. And then there were the, another empire called the Persians. This is where, you know, today is Iran and all these places. There was a huge empire. Even if you visit, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, gave me the opportunity to visit Iran. And I went to a place called Persepolis. Like I went to Asfahan, Shiraz. By the way, Iran is a very beautiful country. Very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country. Among all the countries that I left, this was the most beautiful I say about it. There is an old city called Persepolis. This used to be the seat of the empire. If you go and see, even during the time, we are talking about 14 centuries ago, you see how they had their theaters and the buildings they had, and the way, it's amazing. And now it's buried, and they use it now as a tourist area, and all these things we read in the Quran, you see them there, that Allah said people built homes in the mountains, they had their palaces there. Now. We don't know how these people did it. Today you have to take a helicopter to go to a mountain to see where they used to keep their kings until today. And that remained. And Allah said in the Quran this. He said, Like these people have dug in the mountains and made ha houses. In Jordan, for instance, there's a, a huge city. It's all built in the mountains. People curved it in the mountains. If you go again on Google, this thing now, alhamdulillah, is available for us to see. Now, so there are these two empires, the Romans and the Persians. The Romans were people of the book, like they used to worship Allah because they were Christians. The Persians at that time used to worship fire. That's why they called them Majus. Allah used this in the Quran for them. Now, the Prophet والسلام, used to pick people who are what we call today role models because he knew they are intelligent, they are smart, they are very tactful. They know how to persuade people. They really are intelligent people. So among them, he chose a man. And the man, remember the name, his name is Rib'i ibn Amir. Rib'i ibn Amir. He said to him, I want you to go to the empire, to Romans, and deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And tell them about me. Take some, like today's, you know, send ambassadors. People go and meet with presidents and kings and prime ministers. And normally there is a process. When you grow up, inshallah, if you go into uh, any diplomatic work, you will see that when a country wants to deal with a country, they will send an ambassador. And the ambassador will have uh, certain uh, papers. He will go and deliver it. Then they will have, uh, they call it i'timad. I'timad means they will uh, take him as a representative of that country. This used to be a tradition since then. So Rib'i ibn Amir, the Prophet picked him. He said, I want you to go to these people. And, uh, and uh, at that time, the king was, his name was Rustum, the king of the Romans. He said, go to him and deliver the message. Now this man, with all the confidence, the youth he had, the faith Allah gave him, the intelligence he had, he goes to this man. When he walked into the palace, and these people had, by the way, even then, these people will have huge, like, it's not compared even to what you think now. The, the palaces they have, the dresses they used to dress, the thing that they have, they're amazing. So this man walks in, <coughs> and look at the dialogue. So this king of the Romans asked him, he said to him, what brought you us? What, you, what brought you to us? You know what this man said? He said to him, we came, we came like Muslims, to do what? He said, جُئِنَا لِنُخْرِجَ الْعِبَادِ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ الْعِبَادِ إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ رَبِّ الْعِبَادِ Like we came first to free people from worshipping people to worshipping Allah who created everyone. 
That's the message of Islam. Like you free people from worshipping anything. Some people worship trees. Some people used to worship animals. Some people used to worship idols. And some people used to worship people. Even today, there are some people who worship people. So he said, we came to take these people from worshipping people to worshipping God who created everyone. جئنا لنخرج العباد من عبادة العباد إلى عبادة الله الواحد القهار. Now, and we came, he said to him, the second thing, he said, and we take people from the tight worldly life, which is limited, as we said in the beginning, by death. He said, من ضيق الدنيا إلى سعة الدنيا والآخرة. We came here because we want to take people, instead of living in this worldly life that has no guarantee when you are going to die and someday you're going to die, to actually take people from this into the extension of this life, which is the Akhirah. And then he said to him, the third thing we came for, جِئْنَا لِنُخْرِجَ الناس مِنْ جَوْرِ الْأَدْيَانِ إِلَىٰ عَدْلِ الْإِسْلَامِ that we came here also to take people from the injustices, the oppression, the, all the bad things that people do in the name of religions into the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the man. This is our own mother for us. Now, again, come back to the recent history. This is for you. Now, there was a teacher, teacher, sometime in history. And he had a student who was about seven years or eight years of age. So he called him. Or he heard him saying this. The teacher was teaching a class, this life containing it. He said, you know, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day he was sitting, and all of a sudden, he told people about this. During the time of the Prophet rule in Mecca, we said they were the Persian Empire, and then the Roman Empire. In between and around Turkey, you know, Istanbul today and that area, there was another smaller uh, kingdom. So he said, the Prophet ﷺ, this teacher was telling this young seven-year or eight-year boy, he said to him, son, um, the Prophet ﷺ, one day, all of a sudden he said, Ni'mal Amir, Amiruha, wa Ni'mal Jaysh, Jayshuha. He said, what a beautiful Amir, a leader, and what a beautiful army. And people said to him, Ya Rasulullah, what are you talking about? He said, that beautiful Amir and that beautiful army is the army that's going to take the Muslims into those lands of Istanbul. So, and that's what he said. When this little boy heard the teacher saying this about the prophet, he said to his teacher, 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 did that happen? Did it happen? The teacher said, not yet. It didn't happen. The prophet said it. But it didn't happen. This young boy said to him, teacher, you think I can do it? He said, yes, anyone can do it. And you know what he said to him? He said to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, every human being come exactly like any other human being. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by the way, this is to all of us, from me down to you there. He said, wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. Allah brought you out of the wombs of your mothers and you knew nothing. And then Allah says, Allah akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a wa ja'ala lakum al-sam'a wal-afsara wal-af'idata qalilan ma tashkuru. Then Allah developed, you know when a baby is born, he doesn't see in the beginning. First thing he hears. You remember when we were little kids, when we have um, little babies born, we keep doing our hands to see when they are going to see. But they hear, you do this, you see the baby moving around, you cling something, they look there, but they didn't see it. Then gradually they develop their sight. And then later on, uh, fuad in Arabic could mean heart, intelligence, mind, uh, all of these things that have to do with an intellect. So Allah said this, the teacher told him, any human being, all of you, by the way, are here. We get exactly the same. And then these things happen later on. So he said to him, any human being, and by the way, this is for you. Every one of you has a, I'm telling you, the chance to be anything you want. Just keep it in mind, you'll be what it is, and work for it. So this boy, 
started working for it, that he believed in himself. Teacher was his role model. The biggest role model for him was the Prophet ﷺ. Studied all these companions, and exactly at the age of 17, this was the leader of that army who walked into Constantinople. History tells us his name is Muhammad al-Fatih. Muhammad al-Fatih, Muhammad the Victorious. And at the age of 17, he was the leader of that army that the Prophet ﷺ praised. He is the one who led Muslims into Constantinople, and it's known in the book history that this is the man that we have. Now, the last thing that I wanted to say, because I want to give you some more time, inshallah, is this. During the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, you know Umar ibn al-Khattab, the Khalifa? He appointed a judge. And the judge was short, very short. You know that some people are old, but they're very short. I have a son of mine. If I bring him to you, he's 32 years, but you, can, you think that he's only 15 or 16. Very short, very small in size. So he put him on the bench. You know when you go to court, there'll be somebody sitting in the bench, and then people will stand. And the, in those days, even here, when the judge walks in, they'll call you, and then everybody stands until the judge sit down, and then you sit down. So before the court starts, he was sitting on the chair, and these people came arguing. They had a dispute. They were fighting over something, and they were coming to the court, to the judge. And then they looked at him. They thought he's a child. Some of them said, we thought he's the son of the judge, an impolite boy jumped on the seat of his father. So one of them said to him, uh, kid, what are you doing there? <laughs> so he said, I am the judge. Huh. Everybody said, you? He said, yes. So one of them said to him, how old are you? Now, because he looks small. You know what the boy said to him? He didn't tell him his age. He said to him, by Allah, I am not younger than Muaz bin Jabal, another role model, when the Prophet appointed him as his ambassador to Yemen. You know, the first person that Rasulullah sent to Yemen when he, with the message of Islam, was Mu'az ibn Jabal. Mu'az was only 17 years of age, or 16 years. And I am not younger by Allah, listen to this, that's Mu'az when he sent him to Yemen, and I am not younger, and he starts saying about uh, Rib'i ibn Amir, and he, all the people the Prophet chose when they are younger people. And people understood that this boy is around 16, 17, because people used to mature very early. Right? All these are, we have lots of role models in our life. Lots of them. All what I want you to do, sometime, take time. You can ask your teachers, you can ask your imams, you can come to us. Uh, by the way, I have tons of books I love to read. I'll pull books for you. And now, alhamdulillah, there are books in English, books in Arabic, about all these role models that we have. All what you need to do is to go and search for them. If you start there, then I can assure you, you will not limit yourself for that. I will stop here, inshallah, because with you, I always give you some time. We already had um, half an hour, because I have 10 minutes left, right? I'm good at time, by the way. I came here right on time. I don't get late. So I will leave the rest for you, inshallah. I hope you digested what I said. I hope I said it the way you can understand it. Now, if you have any questions, any comments, it's your time. There is no limit. You can put your hand up, you can send a piece of paper, and you can tell me what you want to tell me now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Actually, you, that's not true. Most of the Sira books, halas, um, even now, right now, just before I came to you, I have a book, right? This is a recent book. Uh, this is a recent book. It just came out this year. It's about 500 pages. And it says, Hada Muhammad Rasulullah. This is Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. 500 pages. The first part is all about his life and the circumstances, even his childhood, what he used to do, all the next time. And he was not known before that, but even the traces that they have, like for instance, the Prophet ﷺ, his birth, the trip he made with his mother, the thing that he had, uh, and even him, one of the incidents, like for instance, he mentioned, he said, I used to be like other kids, he used to, uh, like he was a shepherd. And he said, people used to take turns, you know, young people. When there is some party or something, they used to go in turn, like, I'll tell you, okay, you look after my goats or sheep or camels, and then I'll go and so on. He said, this night, there was a wedding. 
and I wanted to go to it. And then I gave somebody my turn to take it, and on the way I slept. I didn't wake until the morning, because Allah wanted to protect him from not hearing things. Now, many of you might hear that the Prophet والسلام, because he used to hear what Jibreel tells him, he used to be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he kept himself away from so many things. And Allah did keep him away from that. Like one time, uh, he said he was walking, and then all of a sudden he heard the flute. You know, those people, the shepherds used to have this long flute, pee, 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 they sit down. And then he put his hand in his ears, and he said to Ibn Abbas, who was walking with him, uh, tell me when this voice completely disappears, because he didn't want to hear it. He didn't ask him, he said, and then after some time, Abbas said to him, okay, now you are, there is no sound. Like, you know when somebody is playing a musical instrument or a flute or a drum, and then you go, it start diminishing, 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 and then you, you go further, and then all of a sudden you don't hear anything. So many stories like this. For instance, the trip he made with um, his mother. He didn't see his father. Um, and he uh, made trips with his mother. The trade he used to do before he got married to Khadija radiallahu anha, she made lots of descriptions who approached him, how the marriage took place, how the proposal came, the dealings that he had, all of this before the message. Now, yesterday, one of the sessions, I'm not sure, um, I think it's Dr. Altaf Hussein or somebody, uh, no, yes, sir, was saying that before the age of 40, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the message after he matured. And you know, in Islam, the peak of maturity, there are two things. One, when you show signs of manhood, like if a boy shows signs of manhood, or a girl shows signs of womanhood, this is what is called sinna taklif, like a person becomes responsible. But the peak of maturity is when you reach 40. So I mentioned it in the Quran. Hatta idha balaga ashuddahu wa balaga arba'ina sana. Like even the messenger, most of the messenger, including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, received revelation at the age of 40. 40 is the peak of maturity. When you mature physically, you mature intellectually, you mature even spiritually. From there on, and Allah, by the way, described this, um, I, I say this because of the time I didn't want to say it, but the way Allah tells us the cycle of our life, every one of us sitting here, where did we start from? Babies. Weakness. Allah said, Allah alladhi khalaqakum min da'af. Every one of you was created as a child, a baby. Imagine a baby, if you drop a baby, he'll crash. And then we keep growing. He said, Allah alladhi khalaqakum min da'af. Thumma, then, ja'ala min ba'du da'afin quwa. We keep growing until we reach the age of maturity. This is normally around 12, uh, 14. And then, until the age of 40, you have 25 years. This is the peak of our youth. But after that, you go down curve. Because after the peak, you start getting old, and Allah says, um, You go now, now you become weak, and then you show signs of old age, like gray hair, and then you go down. And some people, as Allah said, like you, be, you might die in this, and there are some people who go beyond that, but they're very rare. Yani the Prophet والسلام, said, this Ummah of Muhammad, our average is, is 60 to 70. He said, أعمار أمتي بين الستين والسبعين. There are nations before us who used to live very long. During the time of Nuh, people used to live long. One of the stories, they said, no, no, Allah said he lived more than 950 years, right? He said he was giving da'wah, he was giving the message for 950 years. But now he was born, so even if you say he's born 40 years before that, he's 9,990. And during his time, people used to be long. The, one of the stories that's mentioned, this might be something that you want to remember. They said a woman lost a baby, and the baby was 300 years of age. 300 years, and it was a baby. The so baby was still 900, 500, you know. So the woman grieved so much. So they brought her to Prophet Nuh, like to comfort her to make her figure. He said to her, Ya Ummah, Ma'am, you are very lucky. Allah gave you 300 years to enjoy this baby. And Ummah will come after me, meaning us, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Ummah. Their average age would be 60 to 70. So the woman said to him, really? Do they build homes? Because she's 60 years to somebody who lives now, they build homes. And then she said, Ayabnoon, do they build homes? And she said, 
by the way, this is not even enough for me to make the sabih, yani for that. So that was the comfort for her. So our ummah, although we are shorter in time, Allah said the blessings that Allah put in Muslims' age is much more than what he did for the nations before us. Okay? So there is, there are books in Sira. Most of the books, by the way, have that. Just read the first chapters before you got into the message. You will get inshallah. Okay? Any other questions? I can't see because the light is right on my eyes. So if somebody's there, just shout. Especially people on this side, I have no problem because this light is right on my eyes. I can't see beyond the second line, actually. Now, there's anything? Ah, by the way, for the guests, I also mentioned this book, Ummahatul Mu'mineen. Like all the Romans, Khadija, Fatima. By the way, even the wives of the Prophet, والسلام, each one of them was a character. Let me just give this to the sisters. You heard about Hafsa, Umm al Mu'mineen. Hafsa was the daughter of Umar bin Khattab. She was such a strong character person, very strong character. She was the wife of the Prophet, والسلام, the daughter of Umar bin Khattab. Umar was a tough man. And Aisha radiallahu anha used to feel jealous about her. Every time she mentions Hafsa, she said, Wa kanat bintu abiha. Kanat bintu abiha means, oh, don't forget who her father is. And she used to argue a lot with the Prophet because she knew her rights. She makes a clear distinction between the Prophet being a Prophet and a messenger and between him being a husband. So whenever he asked her to do anything, she used to say to him, Ya Rasulullah, are you talking to me as a Prophet, a messenger, or talking to me as a husband? If he's talking as a Prophet or a messenger, Allah said we obey the Prophet, case closed. If he is talking to her as a husband, oh, she will give it to him. And one day, actually, her father walked in and she was arguing with the Prophet. And Umar said, Oh my God, what are you doing? Don't you know this is the Prophet? She said to him, Well, I asked him whether I'm talking to him as a Prophet or a husband. He told me, Talk to me as a husband. And the Prophet smiled. He said to Umar, Leave us alone. She's my wife. I'm talking to her as a husband. By the way, Hafsa. You will be surprised. She was divorced by the Prophet والسلام, because she went to argue with him and argue. And one day he told her, listen, I have had it. We cannot continue like this. You better go to your family. In those days, by the way, this is before Allah even revealed Surah Al-Talaq. You know, there is a chapter in the Quran called Divorce, Surah Al-Talaq. So he sent her to her family. In those days, if a husband sends a woman back to her family, she's divorced. Now, they said when he sent her to her family, she went there. Jibreel came to the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, ruddaha, take her back. She's a difficult woman, strong character woman, but she's a very pious woman. Actually, Hafsa was very pious. And Jibreel, this is the angel saying to the Prophet, Innaha sawwamatun qawwama. She is strong character, yes. But that's not, that's not a negative thing. But she is very pious. So, I mean, she used to fast along. Qawwami, she used to establish nightly prayers. The Prophet didn't move on it. Then Jibreel came to him with this revelation. Look at that. By the way, Surah Al-Talaq goes this way. You read, A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuhan nabi, O Prophet. Ida talaq if you divorce women, you cannot just send them home. There is a due process. And you apply it so that people apply it after your own mother. Now, Ya ayyuhan nabi, idha talaqtumun nisa'a, fatalliquhunna li'iddatihinna. They have a period, a waiting period for them. Wahsulida, and count that time for them, because it varies. A woman who has no children, a woman who is not pregnant, a woman who has this, a woman who has that, then everyone has a different. So you have to be careful. They have a time. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ And fear Allah your Lord. لَا تُخْرِجُهُنَّ مِنْ بِيُوتِهِنَّ The fact that you pronounce the divorce, you cannot send them out. They have a time to spend with you until this is sorted out. وَلَا يَخْرُجْنَ And they not short. By them reading the Quran word for word for you. Now then the Prophet ﷺ, calls her brother. You know who's her brother? We know the famous name, Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn Khattab. He said, Ya Abdullah, go to your sister, tell her that Allah commanded me to bring her back to have her, what we call today, due process. 
She has to wait a certain period. She has certain rights. She has to be in this. So um, Abdullah goes to Hafsa radiallahu anha. He says to her, Ya Hafsa, I have good news for you. She said what? She said, Allah commanded the Prophet to take you back until you fulfill this obligation. She said, wow, Allah did this? She said, yes. And he read to her, Ya ayyuhan nabi, idha talaqtumun nisa, fatallikuhunna li'iddatihinna, wahzul idda, wattakullaha rabbakum, la tukhrijuhunna min biyutihinna, wa la yakhrujna, illa ayyatina bifahd. She said, wow. So, what's now? She said, he sent me to bring you. He said, what? He sent me out. He comes and picks me back. <laughs> I said, I went to my father and said, you know what your daughter is saying? He said, what do I say? He said, go and tell the prophet. So he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the prophet said, غلبتني حفصة. What can I do? This is her right. And he went and picked her up. So he read about Aisha, about Hafsa, Umm al-Mu'mineen. Women live around the Prophet as an, each one of them if you study their life you go by it you have I told you hundreds of moral models that you can get inshallah Taib, go ahead you have what? Allah said this in the Quran because these are ignorant people they're really ignorant people ignorant people the best you can say is Allah guide us you know when people tell me things like they say may Allah guide us just if you go on you will not go anywhere with them now that's it? What that? Oh, can you read it? Because I, I have a problem actually reading. My eyes are not that good and it will take a long time. So read it for quickly and then I'll... But, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, um, the question was, the sister asked, before we were sent down to earth, we were asked if we want to be humans or angels. Allah told us that if humans pass the test of this earth, he will be in higher ranks than the angels. So when babies die in their wombs, or at an early age, what is their test in this life? Ah, now, nah, type. Um, this is a beautiful question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually created the human with two things. One pulls you to the earth, like our, what you call, instincts, whims, all of this. And one pulls us up to heaven. And then he gives the Quran. And he says, if you follow the Quran, you will take yourself up. If you don't, you go down. Now, children who are born uh, before they have any, or not for that purpose, or not even children, anyone who didn't hear about the message, we leave this matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People have opinions. Allah didn't tell us exactly what this. Now, the opinions go this way. Some of them said, these are forgiven because they're innocent people. Allah will deal with them because Allah said, ما كنا معذبين حتى نبعث رسوله. We're not going to punish anyone without sending them a messenger, without sending them a warner. طيب. The others say, Allah will bring them on the day of judgment. خلاص. And then there, he will test them. And if they are good, they will go this way. If they are not good, that way. Do you understand that? So we leave these matters, they call them matters of ghaib. We, these are matters, we leave them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all say that any child, and Allah said, any child is born innocent. So Allah will deal with them. We don't have to deal with that. We don't have even to worry about it. Allah will take care of it, inshallah. Okay? That's it. Our time is up. Huh? That's it. Five. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah bless all of you, inshallah. I hope you learned something. I hope you can go and start searching for what I said. And I hope we can start finding all these hundreds of role models that Allah gave us. Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallah. حمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله